hello and welcome today i've got tympanic membrane and i will discuss different types of perforation of it and their clinical significance so first we have to know how the tympanic membrane looks like when we see at it from the external auditory canal let's have a look most of the tympanic membrane is formed by parts tensor it is a taut membrane and uh, it is peripherally condensed to form a fibrocartilaginous ring this is called tympanic annulus and there is another part this is called pars placida it is the upper part above the anterior and posterior malleal fold this is called pars placida also known as attic part or sharp nails membrane the pars tensa is a taut membrane but pars placida is placid not so taut the pars tensa is uh, tented inwards towards the middle ear by the handle of the malleus and from the tip of the malleus a cone of light radiates towards the anterior inferior part and this tympanic membrane is placed uh, obliquely between the external auditory canal and the middle ear because the posterior superior part is more lateral than the anterior inferior part of the tympanic membrane it is about uh, 9 to 10 millimeter tall 8 to 9 millimeter wide and 0.1 millimeter thick so we have uh, known about the appearance of the tympanic membrane now we'll discuss different types of perforation number one is the central perforation when the perforation is at the pars tensa it is called central perforation and the number two is the attic perforation when the perforation is at the pars placida it is called attic perforation when the pars tensa perforation occurs at the periphery of the pars tensa and involves the tympanic annulus this is called marginal type of perforation and in the pars placida perforation there is no tympanic annulus in the pars placida so pars placida perforation or attic perforation is one kind of marginal perforation the central perforation that is pars tensa perforation can be subtotal or total when only whole of the tympanic membrane is lost due to perforation but intact tympanic annulus is left this is called subtotal perforation and total perforation implies that whole of the tympanic membrane including the tympanic annulus is lost and the central perforation can be anterior to the handle of the malleus this is anterior perforation can be posterior to the handle of the malleus this is called posterior perforation so we have learned central perforation attic perforation marginal perforation subtotal perforation and total perforation now if we discuss about the uh, different clinical correlation of the perforation number one the tympanic membrane perforation uh, is associated with conductive hearing loss the loss may be 10 decibel to 40 decibel the tubo tympanic variety or safe variety of choric otitis media is associated with the central perforation and the antiquantral variety of the chronic otitis media or unsafe variety of chronic otitis media is associated with attic perforation or marginal type of posterior superior perforation in the resolution phase of uh, acute separative otitis media there is perforation seen in the anterior inferior part of the tympanic membrane through this perforation the pass comes out of the middle ear and uh, it is seen through the external auditory canal and the disease then enters into the resolution phase in the tubercular otitis media uh, multiple perforation maybe two three or more perforation may be seen at the tympanic membrane and this perforation may collapse to form a single perforation in case of cholestetoma formation when there is a retraction pocket in the pars placida or it may form due to basal cell hyperplasia of the pars placida due to subclinical infection then the cholestetoma may form and when this cholestetoma expands it may perforate through the attic part into the middle ear thus causing attic perforation in the unsafe variety of chronic otitis media the acoustic emittance test measures the volume between the probe tip and the tympanic membrane it is uh, normally one milliliter in children and two milliliter in adult when this volume is increased that is more than two milliliter in children and more than 2.5 milliliter in adult it implies that 
there is a tempering moment perforation because the volume of the middle ear is added to the volume of the external auditory canal. That's all from the tempering moment perforation and its significance. Thanks for watching. See you later. Goodbye.